what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turned back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. Niger's military junta chief who came to power in a July coup d'etat officially set up on Thursday an anti-corruption commission and a state court. State TV broadcasts live the two ceremonies to formally establish the transition bodies. Members of the court and commission two new bodies swore an oath in front of new strongman General Abdurrahmane Tiani in his first public appearance since leading the July 26th ousting of democratically elected the president Mohamed Bazoum. Military chiefs, government members, traditional chiefs, religious figures and foreign diplomats attended the inaugurations in the capital Niamey. The new state court replaces the court of cassation and state council which were dissolved after the coup d'etat according to the order setting out public powers during a transition period leading to elections. For now, the junta has demanded up to a three-year transition back to civilian rule but no date has been fixed for elections. The Anti-Corruption Commission's main role will be recovering all illegal acquired and misappropriated public property. It is made up of judges, army and police officers and representatives of civil society. Tiani has promised to hold a national dialogue which will help determine how long the transitional period will continue. Bazoum has been held at his residence in the heart of the re presidential palace since his toppling. Nigel has been subject to heavy economic sanctions by the economic community of West African state ECOWAS since the coup, driving up inflation and leading to shortages of some products including medicines. Conflict in Sudan, which has left thousands dead and 7 million people displaced over seven months, is spreading to new regions of the nation, the UN said Thursday, warning of mounting humanitarian calamity. The deadly unrest includes outbreaks of inter interethnic violence and attacks against women, according to the global body. The United Nations Assistant Secretary General for Africa, Ghanaian diplomat Martha Anna Acha Pobe, expressed alarm over the deteriorating crisis in a Security Council meeting where she told members Sudan is facing a convergence of a worsening humanitarian calamity and a catastrophic human rights crisis. What erupted in Sudan on April 15th? Pitting Army Chief Abdel Fatal Arbrohan against his former Deputy Rapid Support Forces Commander Mohamed Hamdan Dagaro in fighting that left more than 9,000 people dead according to the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project. The number is widely considered an underestimate. Hostilities have spilled over the new areas such as Gezila, White Nile and West Kordofan states placing even more civilians at risk as well as humanitarian operations, Pope says. She said the RSF made significant military gains in Darfur from October 26th to November 4th, taking control of Sudanese army bases in Nyala, the capital of South Darfur state, Zalingeyi in central Darfur and the West Darfur state capital of El Janaina. The warring parties have reportedly carried out indiscriminate attacks while also conducting targeted attacks against civilians in apparent violation of international humanitarian law, she added. Despite the difficulties, some 4.1 million people have received humanitarian aid in the last seven months, but that month 
to just 22% of the people whom humanitarian organizations aim to assist this year. Sudanese warring parties resumed negotiations late last month in Jeddah, brokered by Saudi Arabia and the United States, while both parties expressed willingness to negotiate a ceasefire. The fighting on the ground has intensified, Pope said.